work on that, but the main thing here is the miniaturization of your homing heads, because each one has to be separately and independently guided against a given target. Now, this is the one concept which is very, very challenging, and uh, we need to build a system which can do that in exo-atmosphere. That's the advantage, because the atmosphere not being there, your disturbance forces are not being there, one is in a position to do that kind of a thing. Next, please. Now, in our country, to test this kind of a scenario, where you have to engage large number of uh, missiles over long distances, we can't do it in the present ranges, so we are building what is called a floating range. You can launch, uh, so you have a ship launch target, and you have a, a, a range here, or you have the interceptor coming from the ship, and the missile coming from the shore, and you can do the complete combat over the sea, and we can make use of our landmass to put some of the uh, some of the radars and instrumentation. But it requires a tremendous amount of effort to do this kind of demonstration. Next, please. The technology which has come out in the ballistic missile defense is also in a position to cater for the cruise missile defense. What you see here is a scenario where a cruise missile is flying. But we have all the elements, like the AAD interceptor is a position to intercept at even 15, 20 meters, provided you have the information about the target, because the radars will have line of sight problem. So what you need here are the uh, sensors, which are either space bond or the air bond. So AEWs and, uh, the, and some of the UAVs or the aerostates have to be positioned suitably to do this kind of a thing. But as far as the interception is concerned, the capability of the AD missile or AD-1 missile to engage it at very low altitudes and up to about one or two kilometers, which will be the high altitude for cruise missiles, is well within our reach. What we need to build now is a network of airborne sensors, which will be communicating the information about the target in real time to the mission control center. And then you have the complete command control network to enable launch of an anti-cruise missile system. Next, please. Next. Now, the future long-range missile technologies which we are concentrating are, uh, you see, now onwards, the missile systems which we are planning, they are going to be multi-platform. The same system should be possible to be launched from land, sea, and space. We are entering into MIRV area, so we have to have mechanisms, avionics for each one of them. Then we have to make our missiles lighter. If you see the comparison of the Indian missiles and the European or the Western missiles, there is one major difference is the weight and the size. Our missiles are more voluminous and weighty. That's the only thing. But in terms of performance, in terms of range capability, in terms of accuracy, in terms of payload capability, we are, uh, uh, we are comparable. So we have uh, to go for new materials, composite rocket motor casings, which are required to be built, high performance propulsion technologies, new propellants. Today we have HTPV and ammonium perchlorate. We have to go for ADN kind of systems. So we have to start, we have started working on that. Conical rocket motors, then thin wall carbon carbon nozzles and few other things. And new materials like carbon nanotubes and uh, high accuracy and reliability of the sensors. We all have to start looking at that. And there is a concentrated effort which is being made today for building all these technical capabilities. Next please. Now, this is uh, the slide which is showing how the MIRVs are going to be uh, deployed. And uh, along with the MIRVs, we have started building in our own uh, own missiles, the decoys. So we have started working on the passive replica or the signature diversity type of a decoy system or active electromagnetic jammers and shafts with the following characteristics like minimize the RCS, go for thermal, thermal signature manipulation, or you do a total change in the ballistic coefficient of a particular target. And this has been done. Plus, the critical technologies which are basically for post-beast vehicle, when it is releasing some of those, some of those uh, uh, MIRVs, what kind of actions they are required to do. Next, please. We have a major program which is uh, to build uh, what we call as the hypersonic cruise missiles. And for doing that, if you have to build a propulsion system, it is a scramjet system which will be operating, taking the air from the atmosphere and allowing the combustion to take place as Mach numbers, which are supersonic in the combustion chamber. We have developed uh, some of the major technologies in this, and there is a technology demonstration program in which a hypersonic um, uh, speed will be achieved by launching one of the vehicle, what we call as the cruise vehicle, 
with the help of a solid booster to a Mach number of 6.5 to an altitude of about 30 kilometers. And then we have a flight of about 20 seconds. Now some of the things which are imp important here is development of a scramjet engine for this, aero propulsion interaction, aero thermodynamics and material hot structures. Next please. What we are going to do here is this kind of a maneuver. You go here, fly at 35 at Mach number of 8 and uh, light up the, in, uh, the, the scramjet engine. What is happening here is on the ground today we are with the help of a kerosene fuel, we are in a position to generate a net positive thrust. Some of the critical technologies which are there are the materials and the engine and uh, intake interaction and the engine and the structure interaction. Those have to be done. And finally, when you have to make these systems in, in, in the kind of a weapon system, one has to go for endothermic fuels which are required to be developed today. And later on, we will be going for a dual mode system that you graduate from ramjet to the scramjet in a continuous cycle. Next, please. So these are some of the areas which have already been done. We have a good CFD code available for this. The work on the dual modes is also on. The time, time. Oh, sorry. So that is how it is going on. Next, please. The major challenge is the material. The material, because we are not traveling on hypersonic Mach numbers, so you have large number of different materials which are required to be developed. Titanium super alloys for various uh, parts of this. Some of the uh, some of the paintings and what we call as thermal uh, systems which are required to be done. That's a major challenge. Next, please. This is also yet another project where one has to start looking at just about the ramjet. Next. Uh, these are the new, I thought I should talk to the industry because I thought some industry gentlemen will be here. Basically the CRMC motor, there is a large volume available because we have to build what is called the composite rocket motor in large numbers using carbon, carbon technologies. We have our glass composite required for the canisters. We have extended nozzles which are required to be in the conical form with the flex nozzle configurations and all these are required in numbers. Next. Next please. And uh, these are some of the materials which are required to be developed for the future air structures. These are the nanomaterials starting with the car CNTs which are required for that to get this kind of uh, strength and the modulus which are required for the next generation of the missiles. PGMs are next uh, area where the industry and the, and the, and the, like the UAVs, the PGMs are there because PGMs are nothing but uh, the assimilation of the complete missile and the guidance control technology in the form of large number of systems which can engage large number of targets requires basic no concepts, but what is needed is miniaturization and also packaging. Next please. In the area of inertial navigation systems, today we are, I would like to say, General Sundram is here, we struggle, struggle and struggle due to variety of uh, embargoes. Two areas, one was on the control actuation elements, second one was the servo, the, the, the navigation elements. Today I am proud to say that